You're about 57 minutes away from me. I was almost at the hospital. Okay, you're going to go down and do. Oh, no. you got to get booked in. I'm going to take your fingerprints and picture, and you'll get a bond. Oh, I have children. I have a sick uncle, and I run the household. Please put your hands on the phone. Yeah. No, please speak to her. Yeah. Please, please speak to her. I'm the only one that can help with my uncle that's sick in ICU right now. Sorry about that. Okani, Deputy Devin Blair, headed to work as usual on a summer day in 2022. Little did she know that a routine traffic stop would result in the beginning of the end for a man who had been on the run for almost 30 years. On November 27, 1994, just after 12.30 p.m., two teens were walking near a martyr station when suddenly discharge sounds rang out and one of them took off running. Around 12.40 p.m., officers responded to 1400 Lee Street in reference to a male wounded. According to the original incident report, upon arrival, they found an area secured by Martyr Police Department and located 18-year-old Jaffer Tucker with an apparent discharge wound to his face. The teen was not alert, not conscious or breathing, and unfortunately, he was pronounced gone at the scene. A witness, Jean Ward, was transported to the police department to give a statement, and Jaffer's father, Jeffrey, was notified of his son's passing about three hours later. Days after the incident, Mohammed El Amin was identified as a suspect by a Mata employee. I'm unsure if that was the original witness who went with law enforcement on the day of the incident. The employee said they had heard a single discharge and saw El Amin running while Tucker, who was bleeding from his mouth, then collapsed. The two had been seen walking together moments prior and it seemed that Mohammed had literally took the weapon out took the teen's life and ran. Tucker's uncle, Ernest Cook, said he had briefly met El Amin one time and later was able to help police review security camera footage in the Marta station. Cook said he identified Mohammed from the footage and images. His uncle also shared that Jaffer had only known El Amin for a short time prior to the senseless incident. Detectives officially identified Mohammed Bilal El Amin as the main suspect in Tucker's passing three days after the incident and a local arrest warrant was issued. One problem, he was nowhere to be found. It was as though he had disappeared off the face of the earth. After evading capture for several years, a federal arrest warrant charging him with flight to avoid prosecution was issued on May 25, 2001. The FBI also offered a reward for information leading to his arrest. El Amin's FBI wanted poster stated that it was likely he'd be wearing eyeglasses, his hair would be in dreadlocks or twists, and he was known to carry a firearm in his rear waistband. He was considered armed and dangerous. The man's aliases included Michael D. Bowman and variations of Mohammed Bilal El Amin. Ten years passed. Sadly, Tucker's mother passed away in 2006, still waiting to see the man who was responsible for her son's passing caught and justice served. Twenty years went by, then 25 years went by, but there still was no justice for Jeffords' family. On August 16, 2022, Deputy Devan Blair was conducting random registration checks of vehicles. A routine procedure, she would run the plates as vehicles passed. The deputy stopped a Mazda on East Monroe Highway due to a lack of registration and lack of insurance. The driver, who identified himself as Reyes A. Sekim. What's your, what's your last name? Sekim. Sekim, okay. Provided the deputy with a South Carolina license. When Deputy Blair walked back to the vehicle, she informed the man that his license also came back as suspended, 
something the then 47 year old claimed to be unaware of. Deputy Lex Ogun arrived as backup and the officers explained to the man that they were arresting him for the previously stated reasons. El Amin, who said he was on his way to the hospital to visit a sick uncle or relative, somebody he said was sick, are you? Begged them to give him citations, even going as far as claiming he wasn't a criminal. That didn't sway the deputies, however. They didn't let him off that easy. They told him the law required them to take him into custody. Once he was fingerprinted and booked into the jail, authorities learned he was a fugitive wanted by the Atlanta Police Department and FBI for fatality and flight to avoid prosecution. Oconee County deputies Devin Blair and Lex Ogan, who stopped him, didn't know at first that the driver is Mohammed Bilal El Amin. Today was his worst day ever and the greatest day for me and my family. I've always wanted to ask him, what did my nephew do to him so terrible to make him want to take the fight? Cook thanked Oconee County Sheriff James Hale and his deputies. The good Lord looks after everybody and uh, you know, eventually, if you're if you're wanted, your time you know is going to run out sooner or later. Especially if people are paying attention, so it means a lot to know that you were some small pivotal part of this case. A judge denied bond for the man, once classified as the FBI's most wanted, and El Amin was extradited back to Atlanta, Georgia. Tucker's uncle described Jafford as a promising young man who was like a brother to him, outgoing. The teen dreamed of a career in the music industry. On February 27, 2023, the Fulton County District Attorney's Office announced that three days prior, Mohammed Bilal El Amin was indicted on charges of felony fatality and aggravated assault with a fatal weapon. Almost 29 years after Tucker told his best friend to go to work instead of coming along with him, the person responsible was being made to face the music. What's your What's your last name? Sakim. Sakim. Okay. All right. I'm gonna have you go and step out the vehicle for me. She's gonna come and get me. Yeah. So you're about 57 minutes away from me. I was almost at the hospital. All right. Okay. Let's take this off. Um. Just uh. Yeah, send me what the information you put in your in your GPS, because that way I, I didn't can have go, the same thing. I don't know the name of this place right we'll, here. We'll, we'll get it figured out. We'll text it to you. We'll Prince, Prince Avenue. Avenue. It's All Prince right, Avenue. so Prince here's, Avenue. here's what's going to happen, Sakim, okay? Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, I'm going to have to place you in the custody today, okay? You're going to have to go down to jail. Oh, no. you got to get booked in. I'm going to take your fingerprints and picture, and you'll get a bond. But because you're driving on suspended license, you gotta go down the jail. So I did not know. I have children, I have a sick uncle, and I run the household. I got you. Unfortunately, no, I really we, don't. we don't have a choice at this put, time. Please so we're put placing you in arrest. Go ahead and turn around and put your hands behind your back, please. Please put your hands behind your back. Who set your phone up on the car? They put me under arrest right now. They, I don't know. For driving with suspended license? Driving with suspended license. I didn't know what in the, in, in this, in the, it's not even showing. Unfortunately, the law is different here in Georgia than it is in South Carolina. If you have a suspended license, you have to go down to the jail and get booked in. Okay, but, but sir, can you speak to my aunt? She has to. Yeah. We're on speakerphone. She okay, can hear us right now. No, please speak to her. Yeah. Please, please speak to her. I'm the only one that can help with my uncle that's sick in ICU right now. Sorry about that. Unfortunately, we're stuck. Please, sir. You're driving a car without valid insurance. My son. Oh, we got, you got that yes, taken care of. Got you're already son. driving a car without valid insurance. I won't drive. My cousin. We can't trust my, you trust me to drive to drive. No, I swear to you, I'll walk away from my car. So we're going to walk you back to this please. other car. Please, sir. Yes, sir. We're going to walk you to my car. Oh, come on. Sir, come on. Please, my aunt is old. She's 80 years old. Sir, please. Do you have anything I, on I you? I will not. Poke I swear, you can, please check me. Okay. Please check All everything right. on me. I'm going to search you and send you to arrest. Huh? See what says emergency 911? Yeah. Face towards that. Okay. okay. Sir. Separate your feet out. Okay, sir. A little bit. Yeah. Nothing in your pocket, sir. Right? Sir, please. please. What all do you need out of your pocket? Sir, I have a child at the house that they cannot take care of. I what all do you need out of your car? Sir, I beg you, I what? beg of y'all, I will not touch my car, you can take my keys out. What all do you need out of your car? Uh, I don't need, I don't need my family, that's it. I do for my entire, I do for my, 
I do a seat for me. Sir, I do. Easiest way is to turn and face towards me and then sit down in the seat. Slide your legs in. Sir, I do for my entire family. Okay. Well, do I you know I'm... I don't have a choice here, man. I'm telling you. That's I, I told you I was not going to get in my car. I swear to you, I wasn't going to get in my car. You have a suspended car. license. You're driving a car without insurance. You've got that taken care of. I've been of. doing it every you day. you suspended registration. <laughs> my so you have to go down to the jail and get booked in. Just take your photograph. They're going to take your fingerprints. They'll give you a bond amount. You can bond out, and then you can get on the way up to the hospital. But you can't drive. Sir, I... I so have a seat okay, for me, please. Okay, may I speak after you? Have a seat for me, please. Are you going to... Sit down, and then I'll listen to you. Okay, so what do, you, what do you want to tell me? On, on everything, my aunt just had a stroke. My uncle just had a stroke two and a half weeks ago. I'm here helping my family. I don't even know who can come and bond me out. I don't even know who can come and bond me out. I'm not a criminal. I'm not a crook. I'm, if you, I look how I mean, old you, I am. Did you get a ticket or something? I didn't get take care of? I, I don't. Mean, why would they suspend your license in South Carolina? That's, I just found out speaking to the deputy. Yeah. I just found out that maybe when we had a car that I had to got repossessed, that yeah. I didn't take my name off of it. Okay. Um, I, mean, I, I wouldn't imagine that they'd suspend you for a repossession. But that's what I'm saying. I did. I don't. But but it's no no information is coming up. I won't drive. I will. I'll have my cousin. Can you slide your legs in for us? You're not going to speak to me. No, unfortunately, I told you. I've already explained my position. To you. Oh, this hurts. I don't have a choice. Sir, sir, I. Uh, sir. Okay, so. The way you're sitting right now is not a good position. You're a tall guy. You got long legs. You can slide your knees over this way and sit at an angle. You gotta move your knee. This is really tight on my whip. Okay, I'll check it right now. I'm gonna come to the other side. Watch your knee. So, can you not put your headphones in your little black pouch? Man, y'all really. Y'all gotta please make sure my aunt is okay. She's 80 years old. Years old. I see for the whole house. I shop. I do everything. I do everything in the house. Do you need anything outside of your car? Um, just just know that. I, can you speak to my aunt? Just, uh -uh. just just speak to my aunt because I do everything for the house. I shop. Okay. I, I do everything. My son is there. He's only 13 years old. He doesn't not. He does not know what's going on. This is. This is. I don't. Can you let my cousin know wherever it is I'm going? Can you let him know where it is going? Yeah. So when you get there, you'll be able to call him. How, how can I call him? When you when they book you in, they'll give you some phone calls, so you can call him. Yeah, All right. Yes, because I, I don't. Yeah. Why? I thought she was gonna let me just let my cousin pick me up. Why did this happen? I'm I'm so sorry. People, deputy, so many people rely upon me. You do not know. You can look. You can get in and get out. All right. I can get in and get out. Yeah, like they'll book you in. If you have somebody that can bond you out, you have a preset bond, so you can bond out of jail. You don't have to wait to see a judge. Well, how much is that? Uh, I'm not quite sure. They'll give it to you when we get there. Okay. We'll work with you. All right. We'll try to get you out as quick as possible. This is my uncle is sick. All right, well, the quicker we get to jail, the quicker you can get out, okay? Doors are all locked, all the windows are up. All right, cool. What is it? I've never been to jail in my entire life. Okay, all right. It'll be fine, I promise. All right. All right, we got to get you to the jail. I hear you. I just have to go by what the law states, okay? Yeah, absolutely. 
and I and I and I, I believe you. I believe you are helping your family. But I, I have at the end of the day, I have a job I have to do. And I appreciate you being cooperative. Okay. I'm afraid because my my uncle is in the ICU, and I'm the only one that goes and checks on him. Okay. I'm the only one that's in my house to take care of my 13 year old son. There. My cousin, who is 60 years old, her mother, who's 80 years old. I do all the runs for the house. I do all the cooking. I do all the cleaning. I don't even know how my cousin who is visiting because her father's in the hospital. She's in New York. She lives there. Is going to get to the place to find me. You said she lives in Conyers. I live in. She lives in Conyers. Okay. No, I. That's what we're saying. I, I stay. I used to tell back on my family. I urge you to contact the relevant authorities and help this family get the justice they've waited almost three decades for. The original incident case number is 427K as in kangaroo 2595. That's 427K2595. May the family and friends of Jaffer Tucker find solace in the happy memories, and may his soul rest in perpetual peace. Thank you.